In part one, we downloaded an ISO file, Linux Mint. We placed it into the ISO files folder. We can see that we have my Linux Mint ISO. We have our virtual box. So let's go ahead and get it booted up and get it running. In VirtualBox, I'm going to choose, there's a big blue button here, new, that corresponds also to file. And you can choose Now it's under machine, isn't it? So machine and then new is the same thing. So a lot of times uh, inside of VirtualBox, if you can't find it in one place, you will find it in another. Uh, lots of options here that can be particularly helpful. We'll talk about import appliance later. That one's pretty nice, especially in conjunction with a website called OS Boxes. In this case, we're gonna choose new. And for the name, I am gonna call this Linux Mint lesson one you can call it anything you want this name will just appear over here in the left hand column and the machine folder this is an important one now right now by default it will put it into your user and there's a machine that VirtualBox creates called VirtualBox VMs Now my C drive was kinda of running out of space and that's where my primary operating system resides so I try to keep virtual machines off of there unless I know I'm gonna be using them a lot so let's go ahead and choose that E drive that we created. And it is under the Lesson VMs, Virtual Machine Folders. Now we'll get to that ISO files here in a minute. And so we've got our folder here. We're gonna select folder. So now we've got a folder, our E drive Virtual Machine Folder. We're going to have Linux Mint Lesson 1, which by the time we're finished will be a .vdi file. We'll take a look at that. Uh, it recognizes it's Linux. Ubuntu, Ubuntu 64-bit is fine because Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu. Realistically, as long as that 64-bit is there, we're good because we chose a 64-bit distribution. That's the big that's the big one there, that's 64 bit. Because if I click on these options, you can see we have 32 bit options as well. Um, we need to make sure we choose a 64 bit platform for this. We'll go ahead and click next. This is the amount of RAM that we're going to use, and uh, the RAM slider has green and red. In this case, you can see that my machine has 32 gigabytes of RAM or 29,696 megabytes. I think it may be excluding a few there. So for this machine, I'm gonna choose 8192. That's a good number depending on how much RAM you have. Because I have 32 gigabytes of RAM on my machine total, if I were to give this virtual machine all of it, the operating system underneath wouldn't have any RAM to operate with. So anytime you're creating virtual machines, if you have more than one running, it's a balancing act. You have to know how much system RAM you have, and you have to sort of divide that up so that your host operating system, the operating system underneath, has enough RAM to, op to function, and the virtualized operating system the operating system running in VirtualBox also has enough RAM. Now in this case, if I give it 8192 megabytes, which is eight gigabytes of RAM, that's gonna leave me 23 gigabytes left for the host operating system, which is plenty. So both machines now have enough RAM in order to operate. And VirtualBox is good with this green and red. If you slide it all the way out to the end of the green, that's what VirtualBox is telling you is most likely a safe zone. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. It's going to ask us, do we want to create a virtual hard disk? Uh, do we want to not add a virtual hard disk? Do we want to use an existing virtual hard disk? In this case, we're going to create a virtual hard disk because we'll go through the process of installing this operating system as we move through this series, and we're going to need a hard disk in order to install the operating system that we're going to boot. So we'll create a virtual hard disk. We'll choose Create. Several options here. There are some standard file extensions that are used for virtual operating systems. The VDI, virtual disk image, is the most common one for VirtualBox. However, 
if you're using VMware, you may see VMDK, or you may also see the VHD file extension. We're going to leave the default to VDI. There are two different ways we can create this hard drive. We can make it dynamically allocated, or we can make it fixed size. Dynamically allocated will, if you say you want a 20 gigabyte hard drive, however, your hard drive is only holding two gigabytes of data, the hard drive on the disk of the host operating system will only be two gigabytes, but you'll be able to fill it up to 20. If you choose fixed size, it will create a hard drive that is 20 gigabytes, no matter how much data you have on it. Now, fixed size can run a little bit faster, but it takes longer to create. Dynamically allocated is created very quickly, but it has just a little bit of overhead involved as you are adding data to it. In most cases, I would say almost all cases for me, I choose dynamically allocated because I want that hard drive to scale according to how much data I'm actually using. So we'll choose dynamically allocated. And here's where we have the size. Uh, this is important. 10 gigabytes is good. Depending on your version of VirtualBox, it may present you with other options. If I were to say 73 megabytes, for example, here, that's not enough room to install an operating system. So it's not going to work. Now, in this case, I'm going to stretch it out, and I think most people should be safe, approximately 15 gigabytes. And I'll make it exactly. How's that? Let's see if I can get it to zero, zero. Probably won't let me. OK. 15.8 gigabytes. That'll work. We won't use all of that for sure. It'll probably, by the time we're done, it'll only be about three gigabytes, but because it's dynamically allocated, again, it will scale, and we probably will not use all of that space. Now, take a look up here at the folder that it's in. This is important. We can see that here's our lesson VMs, virtual machine folder. We have a Linux Mint Lesson 1 folder that was created. And inside of that now, we're going to have a Linux Mint Lesson 1.vdi. That's going to be our virtual hard drive on, on disk. And uh, it's important to know where those VDIs are, because if your hard drive fills up, for me, one of the easiest ways to free up disk space on a computer, because I do use virtual machines a lot, is to locate VDIs that I'm no longer using and either delete them or archive them somewhere else, because you can free up gigabytes of space fairly easily if you have an old virtual machine sitting there that you're not using anymore. Let's choose Create. So here we have our Linux Mint Lesson 1, and it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and start this up and see what happens when we just click Power On using a virtual machine. I'm going to choose Start. There are some things here that aren't necessarily super intuitive if you're new to this. Now, it's going to ask me for a startup disk. We could choose that ISO file, but we're not going to right now. We're just going to say use the host drive D. And in this case, I do not have a physical CD-ROM in my D drive. So there's nothing there. And you kind of want to make sure that's the case to sort of mirror what you see here in this video. I'm going to click Start. And we'll see our screen here. Now we have this gray box here. Auto capture keyboard option is turned on. That's the default. That is fine. This will cause the virtual machine to automatically capture the keyboard. If you click in this box, you're going to lose control of your mouse. It's very easy to get it back. I'm going to X this out. It says fatal, no bootable medium found. It did not find an operating system to boot because we have to point it at that ISO we downloaded in the first video. I'm going to click inside of it. And it's going to prompt me, and it's going to say, OK, we're about to capture your mouse. In order to escape that, the right control key will allow you to get your mouse back. I'll say that again. The right control key will allow you to get your mouse back. 
So I'm going to choose do not show this message again because I don't want to see it again. And I'm going to choose capture. So now if I click inside of my virtual machine, you can see my mouse is acting kind of weird. It's not doing exactly what I'd like it to do. It's jumping all over the screen. I'm going to hit con the right control key and I get regular mouse function back. In some cases, you may not even see your mouse anymore after you click inside. All right, so we need to add that ISO file and reboot the machine. So I'm going to click X. This next option is very important. You do not want to save the machine state. You don't want it to turn on and be in the exact same state. What we want is we want to power off the machine we want this virtual machine to go through a whole new boot cycle. So uh, be sure to choose power off the machine. This is usually the smart option when you turn off your VMs. Okay, so now we physically powered it off. We can see that it is powered off. It does not say saved. Uh, this machine state here is an important one to pay attention to if you're having a problem with your machine starting. So let's go to settings. And this is where we can configure everything that we sort of want to configure for our virtual machine. Here's our name. Under system, here we can stretch our RAM. If we made a mistake, you can adjust it up or down. Uh, a lot of times these chipset options down here, in extreme cases, you'll modify those. Most of the time you won't. This processor tab is an important one. You can see here that I have eight CPUs on my machine, right? Depending on how many CPUs your machine has available, again, it's just like RAM, you can give your machine more CPUs to work with. Anytime I'm using a VM and it's the only VM I'm using, I tend to bump it up so that the virtual machine has two CPUs to work with. And that's under the processor tab. And the only way to do that is after you create the machine, you have to go to system and processor and manually set that. That's a great way to speed up the performance of a virtual machine if it feels slow. The acceleration tab, I don't necessarily uh, mess with. You can leave that alone. So uh, down here at the bottom, we're going to go to, uh, we're going to click down. And again, these are all the virtual components that you would have on a physical computer. Click through those and sort of take a look at what you have um, because you can adjust everything from the number of displays to the type of audio to the network, which is going to be super important as well. Let's click on storage. And you can see we have this host drive D. Now the CD-ROM is going to be important for booting our operating system. So I'm going to choose host drive D. And over here on the right, this is important, we have this CD-ROM icon here where it says choose a virtual optical disk. We're going to click on that we're going to choose a disk file. We're going to choose that ISO file we just downloaded by clicking on that icon. Okay, so we're going to head back over to our E drive, or in my case, my E drive. I'm going to find my lesson VMs. I'm going to go to ISO files. And in this case, it's only looking for uh, files that are disks. So if you have other files in a directory, they won't show up. In this case, it's only showing us this ISO file. And now I have that Linux Mint virtual CD loaded into our virtual CD-ROM drive. And then I have a Linux Mint hard drive that has nothing on it. And the machine is ready to be booted. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click Start. and we see our introductory screen to start Linux Mint. Now, in this case, I'm just going to choose to start Linux Mint. I'm going to hit Enter. The last point I'll make here is this boots up, and then we're just going to get to the point where we have a virtual operating system for this video, is anything that you do inside of this virtual machine is safe. Uh, as long as the options that you're clicking on and the things that you're manipulating inside of this virtual machine um, are inside of this window, you can't hurt your host operating system. This Windows operating system that I'm using to sort of host this 
is sandboxed and it's relatively safe. So you can't make too many mistakes here in this virtual machine because it's very easy to go in, create a new one. So I'm gonna pause the video while this boots up and we're just gonna take a look at the interface that we get when we first log in. So here I am with the Linux Mint booted. We are in what's called live mode because everything is running from the CD. Any changes we make right now will not be saved if we power them off. So if I were to go in and delete files or make changes or add things to the desktop and I were to turn off the machine, all of that would be lost at this point because we still need to go through an installation procedure. If you've gotten to this point, you finished video two and it is time to move on to the next video where we'll take a look at some configuration options within the operating system and we'll actually install it so that we have persistence and it saves our changes.